I just want to apologise for the lighting before I start because I literally, I've tried, but it's dark all the time. This time last year, I was about to start my very first clinical placement as a medical student after two years of back-to-back -back lectures, mostly in lockdown and then a research project. It was finally time for me to be let loose on the wards. Now I've got 12 months on placement under my belt and six different rotations. I feel like I'm a bit of a veteran of the placement lifestyle and I want to share my tips and tricks so that you are prepared for your very first day on the wards. Let's start off by talking about what to take with you on your first day. Now that might depend on whether or not you're on hospital placement or GP placement, but I've got my bag here and I haven't emptied it since the end of my last placement. So let's just see what's inside, shall we? We've got scrubs, my Oxford handbook of clinical medicine. The time I've used this the most was on GP placement because in GP you see so much like constantly throughout the day. It's good to have this on you so you can just reach for it and like read up on whatever so I've opened it on back pain you can get them on eBay really cheap or like secondhand and lots of the time like previous medical students are selling them so you don't necessarily have to pay for this new although I think I did because I'm a mug next we have deodorant always want to be smelling fresh then I've got a fob watch I got this one on Amazon and I think it was about six pound I think it's good to have one of these because obviously you know you can keep your phone in your pocket but just so you look less like you're like constantly checking your phone it's good to have a little have a little cheeky look at the time like that also really good to have these for the oskies because in the oskies you won't be able to have your phone next we've got my diary i always at the start of every placement fill my diary in with anything that i am timetabled to do so if there's a day where i've got a clinic or there's a day where i've got a teaching session i make sure it goes in my diary i have my notion as well but my diary comes with me day by day and i know a lot of people on my course use google calendar and they're very organized and color coordinate everything lots of pens all Always bring lots of pens because people steal them and I put them down myself and lose them. I've got my iPad that does come with me most of the time. I think on GP placement I used it to make notes but I haven't really done that since but it's good to have if you want to do some past med or you know revision or whatever. Obviously not everyone has an iPad. We've got my trusty stethoscope. Now I don't wear my stethoscope around my neck but some people do. I lie, I lie. Some days if I'm feeling extra confident I'll wear it around my neck but most of the time I keep it in my pocket um, just because I just I don't know it just feels a bit cocky of me to wear it but I understand you know it's easier to hang it around your neck do I use my stethoscope on placement yes but it will always happen the time when I'm least expecting it so for example I'll go a week on placement on the ward no one will ever ask me to use my stethoscope and then on a random Friday we're on a ward round and the consultant will be like Lydia why don't you just have a listen to this patient's chest or maybe you'll be with a doctor and they will hear a murmur and they'll be like, oh, medical student, come and listen to this murmur. So it's always really good to have your stethoscope, even if it doesn't feel like you're going to be using it all the time. And it's good to get practice for the OSCEs, of course. And then finally, I've got this folder that I keep stuff in at the moment. It's a bit messy, but <laughs> I've got my ID badge. Always good to have an ID badge on you because sometimes people are like, you there, who are you? And you can prove who you are. And on my ID badge, I also keep my yard card. So this yard card I had for my A&E placement and it is A to E assessment. So sorry about my nails, I will get them sorted. So it just lists the A to E assessment and I had that for my A&E placement and it was so handy just to keep you know referring back to it. Um, love yard cards, I'll link them below. And then in here, I've also got some more yard cards a name badge although i could wear this literally right on my forehead and people will still get my name wrong but that's okay and then this is my sign off book so you won't get this in third year at southampton in fourth and fifth year we have to do our certification of practical procedures and it is basically i've written on the back here these are all the sign offs i have to get by the end of final year and i've put a big cross through the ones where i've done them so not something to worry about in third or second year maybe but it depends on how your uni does it at our uni sign offs come in the final two years and i think that's so you can't like get all of your blood signed off in third year and then never take bloods again until you qualify on a placement if you're at southampton or maybe some other unis do this too you may have a log book so this is where i get signatures to say i have been there and that's pretty much everything i take to placement obviously day to day i'd have lunch in there plenty of water next i wanted to touch on like key terms and terminology from when you're in hospital if you're like me and you don't really have anyone medical in your family or you've never spent time in a clinical environment you may arrive on the ward and realize that there's lots of different words that you maybe don't really totally know the definition of there might be acronyms that you see in the notes because doctors love an acronym so my first advice with that would be 
do not panic it's okay to say sorry could you just let me know what that is or what that means like it's okay you're learning at the end of the day you're a second or third year medical student and doctors seem to forget that they once were also a medical student who knew nothing and I thought now quickly I'll just run through a couple of terms that are definitely going to come up when you're on placement and you might have an idea of what they mean but aren't totally sure and a bit embarrassed to ask so the first one is clerking it's spelt with like a, an E, so it's C-L-E-R-K-I-N-G. So basically when a patient like first comes to the ward or into the hospital, you clerk them and that involves taking a history, doing an initial examination, maybe coming up with a treatment plan and then the junior doctor after clerking would present that patient to the consultant on the ward round or whenever, but that's what clerking is. And so when you're on placement, it might be that you get some clerking practice. Now, it's likely that you'll be clerking a patient who's already been clerked by the junior doctors so most of the time it's like you're just doing you're just mimicking what they've done on my A&E placement I just did I was clerking patients like initially so I was the first person to see the patient which is really exciting then we've got ward round it's usually consultant led there's usually a couple of junior doctors maybe a PA sometimes a pharmacist sometimes you the medical student you go around and see all of the patients on the ward and you touch base with them and you see how they're doing, you talk about their treatment plans, the junior doctor might present things to the consultant, things that have changed or that kind of thing. Ward rounds can last from an hour to multiple hours, like six or seven hours if they really have to. It just depends on the type of consultant and, and how they run the ward round. It will depend on the specialty. So surgical ward rounds tend to be a lot shorter because surgeons are very much like zipping around just they don't, I don't know, they just don't drag it out as long as medical ward rounds. So the longest ward round I ever did in third year was five hours. My advice for ward rounds actually on a tangent would be you don't always have to stay for the whole ward round if you have teaching or something else, like don't be afraid to say that like, I have to leave now. Some ward rounds can be really good, some can be really boring, it just depends on the consultant and how they're teaching and if they're teaching you. Sometimes you just don't even get acknowledged and sometimes they're like, Lydia, present this x-ray to me. So it just depends. And then another thing to mention is maybe discharge summary. So a discharge summary is basically a piece of paper that contains all of the information about that patient and their stay in hospital and then what the recommendations are next. Every patient who leaves the hospital has to have a discharge summary. Now let's talk about how to learn on placement. So at Southampton, especially for GP placement, you will likely be scheduled to be in clinics all day long from nine to five. Um, and then when you're in hospital placements, you might be scheduled to be in clinics, be in theatre, go to ward rounds, have some teaching at the bedside. So you will have structured days and timetabled activities. However, there will be days where you don't have anything timetabled. It might just say on your timetable, go to the ward. And it's on those days where you might feel like the awkward spare part medical student if you don't have a plan of what you're going to try and learn. And I know one thing that I struggled with when I was first going to the wards is I'd arrive on the ward very keen, ready to do stuff. I'd go up to a junior doctor or the nurse in charge and I'd say, hello, I am the medical student Lydia, I am here for the day. And the first thing they'd say to me is, great, what do you want to do today? And I would go, uh, uh, literally anything. And they would stare back at me like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do with her? So it's so important to go with a game plan. But Lydia, I hear you ask, what can I actually do as a medical student on placement? And this is a question I struggled to answer at the start. Like, what what can I actually do? Like, I literally know nothing. I've never been in a ward before. What can I do without being annoying and in the way? The most important thing you can do as a earlier clinical medical student is get as much history practice and examination practice as you possibly can. This is especially important if you have OSCEs coming up because OSCEs are mostly going to be testing your history and examination skills in the earlier years of medical school. So for example, if you're timetable to spend a day on the acute surgical unit, then you might plan to go in and take a history of somebody with abdo pain, and you might also want to examine them after you've taken the history. And then once you've taken the history, you might even want to present that patient to one of the junior doctors or even a consultant. And how I'd suggest you go about doing this is when you arrive on the ward, go up to one of the junior doctors, introduce yourself and say that you would like to get some practice history taking. Do they have any patients with abdo pain or any kind of clinical science? that you'd, you'd maybe like to see and if they have a patient that's suitable they can let you know and also ask that if at the end of the history and examination you'd be able to present the patient to them. This whole process will probably take around an hour um, that is assuming you can find the junior doctor who you've 
agreed to present to straight away and it's also something you can do in pairs if you're on the ward with another medical student one of you could take the history one of you could examine and you could present together other than that another thing you could do on the wards is get practice taking bloods or doing cannulas now at Southampton we don't have to get signed off for bloods and cannulas until fourth and fifth year but getting practice in third year is so important I think because I went into my A&E placement um, and they kind of just assume that you already kind of know how to do a cannula so you have to have had at least a bit of basic practice other ideas for things you can get involved in are taking the notes on the ward rounds doing mini mental state exams other clinical skills like getting catheters practice always very good especially if you're in theatre um, I think GP is the best place to practice subcut and I IM injections for sure because they're doing lots of immunizations and stuff on GP another thing you could do is obviously scrub in in theatre that is always a great experience if you get the chance and finally just remember that you will never have this opportunity again to be freely roaming the hospital with your medical student ID badge that allows you to pretty much go anywhere you like within the hospital and seek out learning opportunities when you're a doctor you'll be stuck to the rotation that you're on and you'll be stuck to doing your jobs that you're paid to do you have freedom as a medical student to like see stuff so go and go forth and take that opportunity <laughs> next important tip is to make a good first impression so at Southampton we are assigned a consultant who oversees us for the whole placement and essentially signs us off at the end meet them at the beginning of the placement you see them a couple times over the seven or eight weeks that you're there you go to their ward rounds a couple of their clinics and at the end of the placement you sit down with them and have a lovely sign off meeting where you let them know that you love their specialty and you're probably going to be following in their footsteps as a specialist surgeon of whatever I don't know that's in principle what it should be like however it doesn't always work out like that sometimes you might find that your consultant goes on annual leave for three weeks and then is off sick and then goes to a conference and then it just it's half term so they're not in you find that at the end of the placement you haven't actually seen them very much and they sit down with you and ask you where you've been because they haven't seen you okay that's never happened to me but I know it has happened to other medical students so it really is important to just make a good first impression because if your consultant does for some reason and go off for six weeks skiing in Japan at least you've had that good initial meeting where they've seen your face they know who you are and they know that you're supposed to be with their team to make a good first impression I would either email ahead of the placement and introduce yourself or doorstep them on their office door and say hello I'm the medical student I can't wait to be you know doing your specialty for the next few weeks be proactive in meeting them at the very beginning of your placement this is also a good time to tell them any days that you might be away so for example if you're going to be MIA because you're going to a conference for a few days let them know about that at the start it could also be a time to book in your final meeting if you haven't already got one organized by the university ahead of time and also a really good time to note down their clinic days and any times that they are going to be running the ward rounds because that's when you can make sure that you are ever present in front of them and they can see that you have made the effort to be there. Another way to combat this would be to make sure that you introduce yourself by name to everyone on the team so that if the consultant goes to his juniors and says oh do you know this medical student were they here they can say oh yeah I, m I met them and they took some histories and did some bloods and just make sure that your name is said and they kind of see you they see your face at least <laughs> and I guess that's made it all sound really stressful most of the time the consultants are quite chilled out they just want to see that you're interested in the placement and showing up not all of the consultants are going to accuse you of not being there however just I'm just trying to say that if you make a good first impression and cover your bases and play the game properly then you will be okay I'm also slightly scarred from my surgery placement where on my first day the consultant said to me if he didn't see me on the wards in his clinics and scrubbing in with him throughout the eight weeks then he wouldn't sign me off at the end and I just think that that has scarred me and in contrast my friend who was on the placement at the same time her consultant saw her once at the start and once at the end and happily signed her off so it really is luck with that kind of thing now I think there may be some expectation potentially from things you might have seen on TV or read in like Adam Kay's book that some doctors are going to be really mean and shout at you and it's going to be a really horrible experience luckily I'd say that 90% of the doctors I've met have been really nice happy to have medical students around and keen to teach it's very rare that you'll be on a ward round and they'll ask you a question you get it wrong and they'll shout at you very very rare How However, that's not saying it doesn't happen. I think in one year of placements, I can only think of one consultant who got a bit sassy with me, let's say, when I didn't know a couple answers in a row on the ward round, but I decided not to take it personally because he was exactly the same with his junior doctors and 
it just showed to me that it wasn't it wasn't targeted at me it's just how he was but i do find that mean doctors do fall into like four categories and those are doctors who are having a really bad day um and just aren't in the mood doctors who maybe are going through something really stressful that day and it's just kind of putting the extra pressure on them you being there then there are those that were bullied at medical school and feel like they have to pass that on as tradition and then there are those who are probably just mean people <laughs> those are the four categories so if you do come across somebody like this try not to take it personally try just to accept that that's just some people's teaching style is to get you know a bit cross with you when you don't know it and maybe it means that you'll definitely remember it for next time but also don't panic it's okay not to know things you are there to learn and they are there to teach you if you don't know the answer, I think that's absolutely fine and it's okay to confidently say, I don't know. On a more serious note, if you do feel on placement that anyone has made you feel uncomfortable or you feel like somebody has crossed the line with their banter, then please do speak to your placement supervisor or your placement lead or somebody at the university because that isn't okay. When you're on placement, it's also important to know when it's time to call it a day. You might feel pressured to stay there nine till five the entire day and be ever present on the ward and super keen. And that's great. If you have one of those days where you are there the whole day and you're learning the whole time, brilliant. And when you're on GP placement, for example, you will probably be there nine to five most days because that's just how GP placement works. On the hospitals, however, there might be days where you go in and you do the ward round, you do some bloods, you take a history, you examine a patient, you present them, and then you maybe see a lumbar puncture and talk to the consultant about it. That sounds like a really productive day on placement to me. So if it gets to 3 p.m., you've done all that, then I think it's okay to leave the ward, go to the library, and maybe learn about some of the stuff that you saw that day and consolidate your learning. Remember that you are an adult learner, you're in control of your learning experiences, and you at the end of the day are the one who's going to sit that exam at the end of the year. So don't be afraid to say, thank you very much for today. I've really enjoyed myself and learned a lot. I'm just gonna head to the library now to do a bit of consolidating and private study. And then kind of following on from that point, I wanted to talk about something I was really worried about starting placement, and that is balancing placement and exam Exam revision. Placement is so important for learning and I know in my exams there were questions I could only answer because of things I'd seen and remembered from placement, not because I'd done 2,000 past med questions. So I know after sitting my third year exams that placement is valuable and does help me pass my exams. It's also the best way to like get lots of practice ready for your OSCEs, doing clinical skills and examinations and things like that. But that being said, you can't control what you see or do on placement. Every day is completely random. But there might be a condition that you just never happen to come across on placement. There might be things that you don't see that you are gonna get examined on. So you need to be revising those things as well. My advice for this is to kind of just make the most of the quiet times. Don't just sneak off home, sneak off to a quiet space or the library in the hospital if you have one and get some work done, get some revision done in those times. Also, when you get home from placement, personally, I find it works best if I sit down straight away with a cup of tea and do an hour then straight after placement before I chill for the evening. It really is just about balance and closer to the exam you are probably going to be, have to be working more in the evenings and on the weekends and it's around kind of exam time that things do get quite stressful when you're still on placement. Just remember that it is important to still take lots of breaks, sleep well, get Get lots of sleep, please get lots of sleep. It is the best for your learning and making sure things stay in your brain. Still do your hobbies. Please don't give up your sport or anything just because you're on placement and revising. It's so important to have that healthy balance. Remember that in earlier years of the course, you just need to be getting to grips with the basic medicine, like your bread and butter medicine, your classical presentations and your treatment plans. Don't sweat the small stuff, just be focusing on the big things. Honestly, take it from somebody who tried. You can't learn it all. You won't be able to learn it all by the exams. So just be consistent and focus on the really common stuff. I actually made these summaries in the month leading up to the exams and they were so good for me to have like a good overview of the basics that we need to know. Zero to finals is really good for that, like summarizing everything succinctly. In terms of question banks, I would recommend PassMed and QuizMed. I use them both um, and I felt that really helped because they both have their strengths. Any more questions about starting placements, then please leave them down below. I will try and get back to you as soon as possible. And if you are starting your first placement in the new year or any time after watching this video, then best of luck, you will be fine. Just smile, introduce yourself, and remember that you're there to learn, you're paying money to be there to learn. And also know that 
for me personally I'm enjoying the course so much more now I'm on placement rather than in a lecture theatre so I do believe the best part of the course starts when you start your placement so best of luck and I will see you in the next video bye